Hello everyone. So I was curious to know if I could run Ubuntu 2004 on my old MacBook mid 2010 model. So I upgraded uh, my MacBook with eight gigabyte of RAM and an SSD. It makes a huge difference. So if you have an old MacBook around these uh, this year, I suggest you do the same if you're still using it. As for me, I don't use it actively. I just keep it around to test uh, test code see how it runs on the older hardware. For those in a hurry, the, the conclusion is that it works quite well. Uh, the performance of the interface is quite snappy. For basic tasks, it's, uh, it works perfectly, even when using an external monitor. Actually, if you have an old MacBook, I would recommend installing it, giving it a try, because uh, it feels overall, it feels more responsive than uh, Mac OS. Even the NVIDIA driver performance seems to be a bit better under Ubuntu 20.04 than macOS Hyceria. Uh, for example, if you run CUDA Z, this is a, just a basic uh, benchmark test, but the host device transfer is a bit higher under Ubuntu and uh, the number of gigaflops possible uh, is a bit higher. Now I'm using screen capture, so the performance is a bit less, but usually I get 88 gigaflops and close to uh, 2000 megabytes per second. If you run NVIDIA SMI command, you'll notice that you don't have access to the GPU utilization. Uh, not sure why, but you can get it elsewhere. So if you go in the NVIDIA X server settings, you should be able to get it. Now for the real question, can you do machine learning with this GPU? So first thing you notice, you have only access to 256 megabytes of VRAM. This is not enough for most tasks. Also, if you run seal and full, you can see that it only supports uh, OpenCL 1.0. And libraries like even libraries like PlateML that aims to run on maximum number of hardware supports doesn't support it. Supports OpenCL 1.2. Also, the it supports uh, CUDA 6.5. That's the maximum version it supports. But there's no ML library I know that supports that. Even the earliest version of PyTorch I think supports CUDA 7.0. And TensorFlow, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's. Um, I think it's more than this version. I didn't find any frameworks uh, that uses uh, that low of a version of CUDA. So you're stuck uh, doing ML on CPU if you want to use uh, if you want to use this this hardware. I think the only way to use hardware acceleration for ML on this machine is to use TensorFlow.js. Um, so if you so for example, if you can do a GPLOP test. as you can see the performance is not super but that's the only way I found I think this is the WebGL backend but I think they're working on a new backend that will have a, a bit more performance so we can try that later now the title of this video is about fixing NVIDIA driver issues also so if you want to make this work you need to uh, to install create a uh, grub script to set some PCI registers. Otherwise, you're forced to use the Nuvo display driver, which is good for 2D tasks, but as, you, as soon as you use 3D type of uh, workloads, it doesn't work very well. You cannot even run Quake 3 in full screen properly. If you install the NVIDIA 340 driver without doing uh, making this grub script, uh, you're going to boot back to a black screen and going to be forced to uh, boot in safe mode and disable the driver after. So first thing, I suggest you install Ubuntu without internet to make sure that it doesn't download uh, a version 340 and install it automatically. Otherwise, it's more complicated to do this fix. Once it's installed, 
you know, uh, before switching to uh, very important before switching to a 340 driver, you need to create uh, the script. I'll show you how. Before we start, you can find the description of this fix on the Debian wiki page, which is dedicated to uh, this MacBook's hardware. Uh, that said, I, I, as in my case, I needed to do some extra steps to, uh, to make it work. I'm not sure why, but I'll show you uh, what to do. I put a link in the description. So first thing we need to list the, our PCI devices. With LSPCI come in. So the two important uh, numbers that we need to, uh, to remember is uh, this one, this line here, PCI Express Bridge, and our VGI controller. Next step is to create our configuration file. You can use a nano editor or gedit, I think. So the two most important commands is a set PCI uh, that uh, with the, the values that you, you took note earlier, we took note earlier. So the point of this script is to set the two PCI registers uh, with that, that we saw with the LS PCI command previously. So why we need to do that is because the Apple firmware actually doesn't set uh, these registers properly and the Linux driver, Linux NVIDIA driver expected. Uh, the same problem under Windows also. So you copy that in your script. If you have another MacBook model, uh, you need to, it probably is gonna be different registers. You just run the LSPCI command, you see which register to use and you change the values accordingly. So once you created your script, you uh, you need to edit the permissions with the chmod command this way. Now normally you just need to after that you just need to reboot, make sure it works, and then change the driver to uh, 240, then reboot again, and you should get the um, you should get the your NVIDIA driver working pretty well. But in my case, I needed to do some extra steps. Because otherwise, I would boot to Ubuntu. I would see the screen, no more black screens, but it would freeze and the order performance would be very, very slow. So I'm going to show you what I did. So with this command, we're going to edit some uh, grub settings. So the only change I did was on line 10 is uh, remove quiet and splash. And here normally there is a by default there is quiet and splash so logically you should not change anything to the booting of the driver but splash the splash screen seems to at boot seems to uh, have an effect on the, the loading of the driver uh, not sure why I didn't uh, test further but in my case it fixes the problem and quiet uh, I think it has no effect, but it's important to, to see what's going on. Uh, it's easier to debug this way. So after that, you can save it. And once you do, you've done these change, and even the, the previous change we did, it's important to update Grub. Otherwise, it will have no effect. And then you can reboot, change the driver, and it should work. Thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe and press the like button.